what do I need to know about construction contract agreements? I'm assuming you're talking about this from a consumer standpoint or an individual uh, point of view. The first thing you need to do is investigate who you're contracting with. You need to ask them for their license to make sure that they're property licensed. Uh, you also need to make sure that they have the proper insurances uh, if, they, uh, if they're going to work on your property and you might ask them for that. Uh, you need to also say, well, could you give me the last three jobs that you worked on so I can contact those folks and, and, and get a reference. So you need to do due diligence with these contractors as well as getting references as far as checking with the Better Business Bureau, uh, con uh, contacting the Consumer Affairs to see if they have any complaints, and just Google them to see what, uh, what the other consumers say. I know that there's ratings there, so it's really critical for you to do your due diligence before you enter into a contract. I have a saying, it's hard to make a good contract with a bad player, and that's where you're going to run into trouble if you if the contractor is bad, well, you're not going to wind up with a, with a good contract to begin with. Uh, also, you need to verify that whether or not a building permit is necessary and confirm that the, the contractor is going to apply for a building permit. Uh, this has to do with like replacement, something as simple as replacement of windows as, or replacing air conditioners, uh, certainly as far as roofs are concerned. And so if a contract uh, contractor does need a building permit, they're going to, before they get the building permit, they're going to need a notice of commencement, which you will need to sign. And this will protect you under the construction lien uh, statute. The contract also should start with a deposit. And so you don't want to give the contractor too much money before he ever starts or, or uh, the work. Now he's going to want some money and he may be ahead of you a little bit as far as the amount of work that he does uh, versus the value that you've received. And so you need to break down the payments and installments and certainly you need to reserve a final payment. The reason for this is, is that if for some reason the contractor would not complete the work, you, will, you should have enough money or almost enough money to complete the work uh, by hiring someone else. Uh, whereas if you've given all your money uh, to the contractor up front, well, and he then is leaves, well then you are in a bad situation and it'll cost you uh, to go for, you know, get someone else to finish it. It'll cost you a lot more than you initially contracted for. Also, the contract that you have with your contractor needs to not only break down the payments, but also provide that they will be giving you progress payment affidavit stating that they paid all their subcontractors and material men before you give them the next draw. So therein lies the reason why you want to break down your payments uh, into at least, uh, two, uh, at least three installments. And whenever before you give the contractor the last payment, you need to be sure that it, he provides you with a contractor's final affidavit saying that he has paid everyone and uh, then once he gives you that you can give him the final payment provided you haven't received any sort of notices from anyone or material men or anyone else that says well you need to make sure I get paid. If you have you need to require your contractor to give you a uh, release from that uh, subcontractor or material men that they used on the particular job. So these are some of the things that you need to look at in your contract. The other thing is, is you need to put down a date by which all this work is going to be done. Now the contractors uh, have some problems with doing that as far as any penalties are concerned but you definitely need to have a time period because I get calls all the time that he started on this and I hadn't seen him in six weeks or whatever, but something in the contract that says, you know, an outside date that this should be done. So if the job should take 30 days, you say, well, if it's not done within 30 days, well then 
you know, I have a right to terminate the contract if it's not done in 60 uh, or, or some outside date. Uh, so uh, this is difficult to negotiate, but you don't want to just leave it open as to when this contractor is going to come back. Uh, construction contracts are uh, hopefully f fairly detailed and may have uh, certain uh, provisions in there about defective workmanship on how you're supposed to claim it uh, before you can bring an action against your contractor, which is a losing proposition. Something else you want to address in the contract is what kind of warranties you're going to have and be sure you receive those before you give them the final payment and don't take no for an answer in that I'll get it to you later or whatever say no I need that before I give you this final check and make sure that once the building permit is pulled or see the building permit make sure that the building department signs off on your your uh, building permit on the final inspection so I'm not sure that I've covered everything but hopefully that gives you a a run and start on uh, looking at uh, entering into a contract uh, to have construction work done on your home or your property. If you have any questions about it or need some help with it, well give me a call at 727-847-2288.